Good afternoon. Don't adjust your TV set. We're coming to you live in the love city of Highland Park from the Motor City of Detroit. Welcome to another edition of Growing in Grace, and I'm your host, Chico Whitaker. Today, we want to welcome those here to visit our lovely city from the NFL draft. Uh, they're downtown. The hotels are built, and we have a draft here this month, this uh, Thursday through the weekend, through Saturday. So we want to welcome all the visitors here to the Motor City. And also, for those in the NFL, uh, if you would like to cut a commercial or bring your sports uh, program to the city, or if you would like to uh, broadcast on WHPR, you can call the station at 313-868-6612. That's 313-868-6612. Uh, today, the name of the program is You Got to Stand Alone. You Got to Stand Alone. Now, before I get into the message of the day, I want to go into the throne of grace. Precious Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless those that are sick. We ask that you heal their bodies and bless their soul. We ask that you comfort the bereaved. Lord, we ask that you heal those that are brokenhearted. And continue to bless the marriages that's being broken uh, or divorced. They will be mended but back together. Lord, we ask that you comfort someone who's about to commit suicide or losing a loved one. We ask that you send your angels to minister unto them. Lord, we ask that you bless those that's in the city that they would have a safe and wonderful experience. And also to call on you in a time of need. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. If I ask you about baseball, uh, home run kings, the names will come up. Hank Aaron, Babe Ruth, uh, Barry Bonds. In basketball, the greatest of all times will be Dr. J, George Gervin, Moses Malone, uh, Bill Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Michael Jordan, maybe Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Steph McCurry, or LeBron James. This is not a sports quiz, but those are, but these men are important in their own craft. And they played an important part in my history. Uh, they broke many records in their days, but we still look up to them. Why? Because they are champions in our hearts. And we adore them. But to have but to have them on a pedestal, sometimes you have to stand alone. Although we lift most people up, uh, like actors, celebrities, princes and kings, millions follow them while they do their things. These are a lot of our demigods. They're our idols, and we worship them. But what happens when they do something wrong? They stand alone. Um, I wasn't going to get into this, but uh, we're in the NFL season. Something happened over uh, 29 years ago, and there was a football player by the name of O.J. Simpson. He went to jail. He was ostracized, but he stood alone. But before uh, he won the Heisman Trophy, he had fame and fortune, but he just died recently. And people despise him for something that happened over 29 years ago. I'm not going to get into that, but a lot of you follow history. Just remember, Marilyn Monroe was famous, and she had several lovers. But she was lonely. Booze and pills and fame couldn't make her happy. Depression and suicide took her home. 
she had to stand alone. Freddie Prince, uh, it was a Peter Duell. There was other people that committed suicide. Had we known, not me myself, but those that are were dealing with that situation, had they known what they was doing, maybe they would have talked them out of it. But they felt that life was so chaotic, and it wasn't a way to get out. So maybe they took uh, pills, injection of a needle, or they shot themselves. They stood alone. So what are you getting at, Brother Whitaker? There are times when people go to parties. They stand on the wall. Some even crash weddings. And they don't know the people. I had uh, women that tell me from time to time that I don't talk to my girlfriends. I don't take them out because they gossip and they get us in trouble. So they say they go places by themselves. They stand alone. How often do we hear the statement, me, myself, and I? We associate with this statement because we feel that if we go somewhere with a, a crowd, we will be associated as a gang. And where there's gang, people say usually trouble follow. So a lot of people stand alone because they don't want to be in an atmosphere where there might be trouble brewing. Uh, enough of that. Uh, let's take it a little farther. Look at history and the people on top of their games. Uh, Michigan, uh, Michigan on Jimmy Hoffa was the head of the Teamsters Union. He made all types of deals, only to be missing when he stood alone some 49 years later. Jimmy Hoffa, he stood alone. Now you might say, what you mean alone, Brother Whitaker? He had people that followed him, and he helped get contracts. But when he became missing, he was all alone and his body haven't been recovered to this day. Uh, Jesus preached and healed uh, lots of people. Yes, he did. He fed millions by 5,000 at a time. He raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, prayed and washed feet, taught his disciples how to preach, preach and teach, and heal. Some say he was a good man. Others say he was a Messiah. But he died for our sins. When he went to, when he went to the cross, he was marked. He was marked by others, the scribes and Pharisees only to die at the cross. There was two feasts on the side of him. One asked him to remember him in paradise. But remember, when you go to that casket, you are all alone. Yes, you are. When you die, you are alone. They don't put babies in the casting with you. They don't put others in there with you. It's just you. You don't share that casting. When they put you six feet under, you will lay alone, unless it's a multiple grave. Now, Job. Job was a man 
that loved God, was wealthy and healthy. He was wealthy and healthy. Had sons and daughters, and his life was rich. Had cattle and land. But Job was somewhat alone. After he lost these material things and his sons and daughters, his wife asked him to curse God and die because she was tired of seeing him suffering. His three friends came and ridiculed him and everything. But most of you know the story. It started in glory. Satan came at that time and asked the Lord, the only reason Job is worshiping you because you gave him so much. So the Lord told Satan, have you thousands considered my son uh, Job that there is none like him who loved the Lord and is so evil. So they had a conversation and the Lord gave, uh, God gave Job, I mean, God gave the uh, enemy, which was saved, in permission to uh, touch Job, but don't take his life. And Job, after he lost so much, and he went through trials and tribulation, he said, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. And at the end of the story, like I said, he was ridiculed by his three friends, but he stood alone. And at the end of the story, he was rewarded at the end. And he had more at the end. Amen. Now, I just want to let you know, Jesus stood alone, praying in the Garden of Eden while his disciples slept. Jesus wanted them to be there with him. But they slept. They couldn't watch and pray. Jesus was all alone. But my friends, you don't have to be alone. For you have a Savior that will never leave you nor forsake you. You have a Savior that is God who loves you very much. Yes, he does. You're with your boys. They rob a bank. The alarm goes off. And you're trapped in a vault. The police come and take you to jail. You are all alone. When you go to court on your court date, after your friends got through robbing the bank. They have different court dates too. But when all else fail, you go to court. And the judge throws the book at you. You're going to stand alone. Michael Johnson, I'm, I'm sorry, Michael Jackson was famous as you can be. He was famous as he could be. He had sleeping problems, just like you and me. He trusted a, God, a doctor to give, to give him something to sleep. He gave him some medicine, and now he's gone from society. Our hero and musician and prodigy, Michael Jackson, died because he got some medicine which was fentanyl he died alone I can't tell you what's good or bad try to be thankful for what you have don't try to keep up with the Joneses my friend you just have to t do your share and when it's over, it's the end. When it's all over, who will care? You're going to stand alone. Through the years, 
we stood alone. And you will too. Uh, some got bullied and now they're gone. What do you mean, Brother Whitaker? Some got bullied. You watch kids in school. Your neighbors down the street. Some even got bullied on the internet. But did you open your mouth? Did you defend them, I say? You listened while they was bullied, and now they've gone away. You could have spoke up and told these bullies to leave them alone. It was too hard for them to live, and now a friend or a loved one is gone. They, they stood alone and died. Now they're gone. So, give, so to give account for your actions, know where you stand. So when, when judgment day comes and you got to give an account for your actions, no one can sing, no one can save you unless you washed in the blood, the blood of Jesus, and repented for your actions. You must repent for your actions. When other when other uh, when all others fail, you will stand alone. Now as I try to finish the message today. A guest takes you out to a surprise birthday party. To a surprise party. And you roast it at, for your accomplishments. You're going to stand alone while you roast it. Life can throw you some curves at times. Life can throw you some curves at times. But it matters how you get through the line. Uh... With the Lord, it matters how you get to the line. With the Lord, everything will be fine. You got to have support system. So, he can help you and dine. Find, find, uh, or it will be the end if you don't have a friend. When all is over, you will stand alone. Jesus is there to pull you through. And when you stand with Jesus, you're never alone. Matthew 28, 19 tells us, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he said, for 20, verse 20 says, For lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the earth. Uh, Jesus was betrayed. And this is in uh, St. John 13, 21. I don't have time to read that, but I just want to welcome the NFL to our city. Welcome to Detroit. Welcome to Detroit. Uh, you're not here by accident. This date is predestined. You will be, you will change lives as you start your new profession. As you start your professional career, some will become superstars, others entertainers, and some will be role models. And now, some will be millionaires while they pundit their success. We would like you to partner with us for the Christmas in the streets while you're here in Detroit. You have a bright future with your ability, your ages, and your talent. Uh, many of you will change the world. Just your endorsements will help you. You can open doors for those who are less fortunate. Uh, you are already celebrities. Now, be a hero for the Christmas in the Streets uh, campaign. 
just 20, just 247 days to this holiday before you go to the Super Bowl. Uh, before you go to the Super Bowl, countless of people need your help. Won't you help this village with your love and support? This is the last. This is the, this is the best thing you can do to help the human race. As I wrap this up, uh, thousands will freeze and die in the streets. When nobody cares, call and help us, please. The number to call is 616-727-0730. Uh, Thank you for listening to me. Until next time, enjoy our city, NFL, and Roger Adele. Uh, for, this is an open invitation uh, for the NFL. Thank you for the draft players and visiting our city. Until next week, you've been watching Brother Whitaker. Come and support this station at 313-868-6612. At Commercials, endorsement, anything you want to do. Call Mr. Uh, Watkins or Henry Tyler. They will help you and tell you what to do. Thank you for your support. See you soon.